Howdy everyone, my name is Griffin. I've been a Bluebeam user for a little over eight years. And in today's video, I wanna show you some tips and tricks for all the newbies out there that want to learn Bluebeam. By the end of this, you'll learn how to set up your toolbar. You'll change your preferences to fit your needs. And we'll run through a couple little things that help me out on a day-to-day -day basis. But I'm ready to dive into it, so let's get to it. All right, here we have Bluebeam Review 21 open. And as you can see up here, you have some different tabs. So I kind of just want to explore some of these tabs. First, let's go to review. Here we can go to preferences. Now, one thing that you'll notice is you have a whole bunch of different preferences over here. And we won't be going through all of these, but I do want to show you maybe a few helpful ones that you might end up using. So one thing that trips a lot of people up is the navigating around Bluebeam. When you're open up in a document, sometimes it zooms in, not how you want to with the little mouse wheel. So I'm gonna go to navigation, and this is how I have my settings. If you want it different, then you have every right to change it. What I like is single page mode and continuous mode to just both be on zoom. So whenever I physically use that mouse scroll, no matter what, it's going to be zooming in. Now, if you were to change it, that means that it would scroll. So if you use the mouse, it would scroll through your document. So change these preferences however you like. Okay, another one that I like to alert people on is the tools. So let's go here to tools, let's go to markup. And a lot of people have this unchecked and it's this auto sized text box and call out markups. I actually like when it's auto sized and let me actually just show you what I mean by that. Let's open up a document. So you're getting another little tip and trick here. You have this uh, file access here, and with file access, you can pin certain documents and you can see all of your recents. I really, really love that. If you're not seeing it over here, you can right click this toolbar, let's do show, and everything that's blue is what is being shown. So right now I don't have spaces, signatures, and sets. I don't really use those very much links and layers I don't have set. And then here's file access. So if it's not showing up, make sure you click that. Let's go ahead and open up some construction plans just so I can show you what I was talking about when I said about the auto sizing. So let me do this little markup tool right here and I'm gonna say hi. So watch when I close out of this markup. You see how it auto, it auto corrected right there to size it? If you really didn't want that, again, you can go back to preferences, tools, and just unclick it. I'm gonna press okay and show you what it does now. So you see how it didn't size? I don't really love that because I you know, have to adjust it every time, but it's up to you what you want. Also, another one that I like is reuse tools. I don't really have it selected right here, but I'm gonna select it. If you do any sort of markup, it continues that markup. So if I were to do a text call out and I do it, well, I can keep clicking and it will be doing my text markups. Whereas if I didn't have that selected, let's go to preferences, reuse tools, let me unselect it. Watch what happens. I'm gonna click it and I'm gonna click out, but now I just have my hand. I'm not reusing that tool, which I actually really like, if you're, if you're doing a ton of markups, I highly suggest you keeping that on. You know, all of these other ones are really up to you. I've never really dove into much of these, but I think those are the biggest ones that I find that it really affects your use and your efficiency when you're marking up plans. So I'm gonna edit out of that. So I just showed you about preferences, so that's one tab down. We can go to file, and this is all of your standard stuff. You know, you can create a new PDF if you want. Sometimes I've actually made entire exhibits out of this before, so I'll show you. Let's do new PDF. I'm gonna do, yeah, an eight and a half by 11 landscape. Now you have a blank canvas to work from. I can post a picture in here, or maybe I can start drawing some different cross sections. I don't know, the world's kind of my oyster in here. You can also do new PDF from template, so you can even create different templates if you want. There are default templates in here, so let's just look at one. Maybe let's go to RFI. So here you have RFI, and that's actually already a pretty good template. And you can create automatic forms. That's a little bit advanced for today's lesson, but you can actually make automated forms to help 
create text boxes for all of these. That way you don't have to use all of the text boxes like this and, and type in. It just automatically creates the text boxes. So it's pretty cool. All right, let's go back up to file. Okay, one thing that I actually really, really love and I use this so often is email. It can directly email pages right from this PDF. So let's say if I just, I wanted to email page 17, I'm gonna go to thumbnails up here and I'm gonna right click this page 17 and I can press email pages and it'll create an email. I don't want my email to, to pop up automatically right now, but you can just email that singular page. It makes it just really, really easy and seamless because a lot of times I'll mark up a sheet and I'll just want to send it over quickly. Also, last but not least, and these are just things that I use often, is export. So you can actually export to Excel workbook. So let's say if you had a PDF of cells, you can take that PDF and export it right through into Excel which is awesome. Just always be wary of the formulas because obviously it doesn't know the formulas. It's not smart enough to know. But still, if you need the numbers and if you need an Excel format, it works. All right, let's go to the edit tab. The edit tab is really, really important. One thing that I love within this edit tab is a thing called snapshot. You can also access this by hitting G and Bluebeam has a whole bunch of different little keyboard shortcuts. So just to showcase that, I'm going to select G and notice how it's doing a snapshot here. So what that's doing is it's grabbing a copy of that image, and if I wanted to paste it, I could do Control V, and then now I've pasted it. And if you don't know yet, if you don't know enough about properties, you can go over here to properties, you can give it you know, an outline if you wanted to. Let's see, give it an outline. You can do blend mode, you can do multiply. Oh, I don't really like that. But you can do multiply and you see how it kind of became transparent. You can also change the opacity. So this is good, you know, if you wanted to take some screenshots of plans, do some overlays, you can look at the difference between the two. You know, it becomes pretty handy. Another one that I use in edit is PTF content. So a lot of times I'll just erase content and I'm really careful with this though, because sometimes if I'm getting a plan set out and there's something that is just showing up randomly, I will erase the content and get the PDF out, but then change it in CAD. But just to kind of show you how this tool works, you can do erase content and it'll just literally erase whatever I hover over. So do you see how it just erased that? Pretty nifty tool if you have something that you really don't wanna be shown. All right, let's make our way to the view tab, show you a few things that I use on the daily. So one thing that I recommend is having the full screen crosshair. You can go right down here have that selected, I think it really helps because you know if you're an engineer, you need to know what is straight, what is 90, what's orthogonal, you know? It kind of helps me uh, guide as I move along and do my markups, but if you don't like it, then you don't have to use it. Another thing I use often is this split vertical. So let's say if I wanted to look at another page, I can go ahead and split vertical. I can click between each of these. So let me go ahead and, and set the page to something else in this one. So now I have the page set to something else. And it, it helps when you're trying to look maybe at a control structure or some sort of detail and you're comparing it to the plan. And if you wanted to toggle back, you go back to view and you can do unsplit. Okay, last but not least, I wanted to make this very basic because I think these are just very good beginner tips, especially if you've just started Bluebeam. So we've walked through preferences, we walked through some of the first few tabs, but now let's kind of walk through some of these markups and how I even got them on my toolbar. The toolbar is one of the most important things and I think it confuses a lot of people. So let's dive through the toolbar. In order to get all of these different tools up here, go to tools, go down to toolbar, and let's look at this for a second. Notice how I have some of these things checked. I have a navigation bar checked. I also have shapes and text. To put it straightforward for you guys is each of these that I've checked are the ones that are showing up in my toolbar up here. However, the cool thing about the toolbar is I can customize this however I want. I have certain markup tools within the shapes, certain markup tools within the text, and certain markup tools within the navigation bar. But what does that even mean? Let me show you how I've edited this. So I'm actually gonna show you which ones disappear. So let me unclick shapes. Do you see how all of that stuff up there is disappearing? My line, my arrow, my measurements. Now let me undo text. So text, notice how I'm clicking and unclicking. 
I'm losing my text box, my edit text, my highlighter, my call out. And then let me, lastly, let's do the navigation bar. Notice how when I click the navigation bar, everything at the bottom disappears. So I've made it very, very simple. Some people love their toolbar on the left, the top, the right, stacked. You can do that as well, but I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Let me show you how to edit your toolbar up here. So in order to edit your toolbar and put more tools up there, let's go to customize. And over here, you have a whole bunch of different categories. So you can do all. And what all does is it shows every little thing that you can put in your toolbar, whatever your heart desires. But there's gonna be someone here that you're never gonna use. Like I have never used WebTab. I've never used Superscript, not useful. So let me show you what maybe is useful to you. So go over to your toolbar thing here and you have all of these unchecked and checked items. This was the same thing that I was just showing you up here when I had my shapes tools selected and my text tools selected. Now this might look different for you as you begin Bluebeam on the default, but let me show you how you can actually put some of these commands over into your shapes toolbar or your text toolbar. So with text, I wanted to build this toolbar out up here. I wanted a text box, I wanna edit text and highlight. So that's what's being shown over here. But let's say, hmm, I really love this text color. I really actually want my text color to be over here in this toolbar. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select it. And then do you see this little add command, this little arrow? I'm gonna add it right over to my toolbar. And if I were to press apply, notice how it gets added to my toolbar up there. And you can do this with any of the tools that you have. So let me go down to shapes, which again, shapes toolbar, corresponds to all of these markups, the line, the measurements, all that stuff. So if I wanted to add another thing, like let's see, maybe a paste in place. I like paste in place, it's a pretty helpful tool. Let me go to add command, and I place it right over there, and now you'll find it right there. It's really easy to customize your toolbars, don't let this confuse you. So if you have a question, put them in the comments. Now let me show you how you can move these around. So since this is a toolbar, I got my little lines right here, that, that line is the separator of the toolbars, I can go ahead and grab this and I can make stacks if I wanted to, if that's how you like it, or I can put it over right uh, to the right here. So if you're someone that likes it to the right, you can plop it right over there. Same thing with this. I can also plug it right over here. Or if I wanted them to the left, I can also do the left over here. But notice how these separate, these separate because this is a toolbar within itself as well. But I don't like having things on the right or left. I'm the type that likes to keep it up. So let me do that. That's all I have for today, guys. I wanted to make this short and sweet. I do have a lot of other videos on Bluebeam. I wanted to make this more for beginner and definitely dive into some of the preferences and the tabs. But I have a whole bunch of other stuff out there regarding quantity takeoffs and a little bit more advanced stuff. So if you're new to Bluebeam, check those out. But I hope everyone has a good day. And if you have any questions, please feel free to give me a comment and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.